right. Now, this, is, this next slide is the focus of, of the lecture today. This is the most important thing you're going to see in, in the lecture. All right, so take note. The fundamental theorem of line integrals. Here it is called the fundamental theorem of gradient fields or gradient vector fields. And it's a theorem that has sufficient conditions under which the line integral is very, very easily calculated. And in particular, the line integral will not depend on the path. It only depends on the initial point and the terminal point. All right, so let's, let's read it. If there is a scalar field phi such that grad phi equals f uh, on some domain, then for every oriented curve, curly C, in the domain, with initial point P and terminal point Q, we have the following relationship for the, for the line integral of f over C. So try to relate that to what you already know. This is a generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus that you learnt either at school or at first year university. Okay? An integral depends on the value of the antiderivative of f, in a sense, at the endpoints only. Okay? It's mass that's a massive theorem. That's huge. Okay? It also has some big implications, not only for computing line integrals, but for calculating work done on moving um, particles around. Okay? So this is a second, I guess, a, a special case of this fundamental theorem. If C is a closed curve, then the line integral of F around C is zero. Right? Why? Because the, the start point of the end point and the start point are just the same. So the value of phi at those points is the same. Right? All right, so the proof, the proof is relatively easy. It's a big theorem, but the proof is relatively easy. So we apply the chain rule for paths to look at this derivative. Okay? Essentially what we want to do is turn our integrand into the derivative of something. All right, so. Suppose we, we parameterize our curve curly C by a vector function, and uh, it's regular and um, smooth enough. Now C of A is going to represent the point P, the initial point. C of B is going to represent the terminal point. Okay? So the vector function C of T parameterizes the curve C for T between A and B. All right. So let's calculate this, this derivative here. Now the chain rule for paths tells us that it's just grad phi along the parameterization dotted with C dash of T. Okay, so how does that help us then? Well, so here we've used the chain rule for paths. Okay, so now we're going to use the assumption 
that F is a gradient field, right? So our line integral can be written in the following manner. Okay. So what we, what we do now is incorporate the parameterization and you'll see that we end up with a beautiful cancellation. All right, so we're at this stage. We know that this is just here, so we can replace this with the derivative here. All right, so if you look closely now, we have the derivative. Our integrand is just the derivative of something. So we can write our expression in the following way. Okay, now C of B is just the point Q, C of A is just the point P. So we obtain our desired expression. Okay, nice simple proof, but a truly enormous result. Okay. Well, so let's look at an application of this fundamental theorem. How does it actually help us to solve problems? What are the physical interp oh, implications? Okay, so this is a good question. Determine the work done by this vector field along any smooth curve curly C from this point to this point. Okay, now note that I'm kind of giving the game away a little bit there by saying conservative here, but um, in practice, what, what, what we'd like to do here is set up a potential, a potential function. Right? So, an important thing to note, note here that C is not prescribed. Okay? It could be any path between P and Q. Okay, so our job here is to choose, if we can, a potential function. Such that yes, well, if if you can break it down into sub, so for example, there's a corner right in the curve. Say, okay, you can break it down into two sufficiently smooth subcurves, right? And then integrate over those subcurves. What's that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've used the word smooth there just to minimise space, right? I don't want to, I'm not going to put down every technical detail in, the, in this slide. I'm a very simple man, you know that, Godfrey, right? Okay? All right. So, we try to find a phi such that Grad phi equals f. Now I know you're all, it's all on the tip of your tongues. What's, what's phi going to be? Huh? X, y, z. Yes. Where did that come from? Well, you could probably guess in these situations, right? Okay. So, 
we can choose phi to be x, y, z, plus or minus a constant. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but to produce that, you would just go, go through the motion, set up three partial differential equations, solve them, and then choose your, your, your functions of integration in an appropriate manner. All right? So you can see that. Okay? Now, what does this mean for the computation? Well, it means that the computation for our, uh, our line integral depends on the endpoints only. So we apply, oh, apply our fundamental theorem to obtain the following. The line integral depends on the initial point and the terminal point only. So, at 1, at one, one, one phi is going to be 1 times 1 times 1, and at, zero, at the origin, phi is 0. So... Okay. All right, so we've solved our problem. We're delighted. We're delighted. Notice that the solution is greatly simplified from our previous example.